This is the ESP32 mic controller. In this video, I'm not going to go over all the nitty gritty technical details of this board, but I'll be going over its applications and how to set it up with Arduino IDE. The ESP32 is actually a pretty powerful mic controller running at 240 MHz, but the two biggest selling points is its price and its wireless networking capabilities. These boards and the modules that have the ESP32 chip on them are actually quite affordable. So if you do need to make a large network of them, you could do so without spending too much money. The feature of the ESP32 that makes it perfect for Internet of Things applications is its built-in wireless networking. This board I'm holding right here has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth that works right out of the box. Since it has built-in Wi-Fi, you could actually connect multiple ESP32s together to form a network, as each can act as either the server or the client. By connecting the ESP32 to a wireless router, you could then access the internet with it, so you could send and receive data from web servers. I've been using the Arduino Uno for a lot of my projects in the past few years, but I'm slowly moving towards the ESP32 instead because of its cost and its wireless networking capabilities. The good thing is, is that the ESP32 can be used with the Arduino and IDE, which gives you access to its environment, a ton of examples, and the entire Arduino community. Let's now set them up. First, you need to download and install the Arduino IDE if you don't have it already. It can be found on the Arduino website. Be sure to select the right version based on your operating system. Once downloaded, you can start the installation. You should select to install the USB driver, and I usually deselect the shortcuts, but that's up to you. The installation shouldn't take too long, and you'll get a few pop-ups about the USB drivers. The installation is now complete. Once you open the IDE, you'll notice that out of the box, there are only the Arduino boards available. There are no ESP32s here, as there are a few additional steps. Go to File, Preferences, and then paste in the following link in the Additional Boards Manager URLs box. Now go to the Boards Manager, type in ESP32, and install the latest version of the ESP32 libraries. This should take a few minutes, but once done, you'll see that all the ESP32 boards are now there. Select the ESP32 dev module. If you look under the list of examples, you'll also see that there are now a bunch of examples for the ESP32. Go to ESP32, chip ID, get chip ID, as it's a nice and easy example to check if everything is working. Let's now connect the ESP32. You will need a micro USB cable and then connect it to the board. Plug in the other end of the USB cable to your computer and you should now see that the power LED is on. Just something to be careful of. Now that it is powered, you need to watch out for the exposed pins. If you place it on something metal, it might short out. The best thing to do is to put it on a breadboard. With the board connected, we are just about ready to upload. Remember to select the ESP32 dev module board and the right to com port. If you're not sure which one it is, just pick one and see if it goes through. Now press upload. As the code is being flashed to the board, there'll be some additional information at the bottom. Hopefully it looks like this on your screen too. If all is good, you can open Serial Monitor to see the output. Oops, this is gibberish. Usually when this happens, you have the wrong baud rate selected. Baud rate is the rate of data transfer in bits per second. Both the microcontroller and the serial monitor need to be the same. The code is using 115,200, so you just need to switch it on the serial monitor to match. And now we get something. Looks like the ESP32 is working as it is able to respond to my request. From here, you can experiment with other examples to become more familiar with the board and the process of uploading. You can try the analog read serial example. Once uploaded and once you open Serial Monitor, when you touch the pins, you'll see the values changing. You can also check out the examples that use Wi-Fi to really harness the power of the ESP32 board. All right, go have some fun now. If you have any questions, post them in the comment section below.